Well, today on the Barometic to Van Wert project, we're going to work on the plumbing. Got the plumbing pretty well mocked up. Well, at least the return side. Got this nice new gauge, too. Kind of like that. Nice big one. A winter's gauge. That's where the Aquastat's going to go. Currently concentrating on the crossover pipe on the back here. I wanted to go full one and a half inch on the crossover here. Got an iron cross here. A one and a half to one inch T for the uh, boiler bypass to feed into. And hopefully enough unions and valves there to uh, actually be able to put it together once I screw the pipe together. That's always the trick. I had an iron cross there, but I think I'm just going to use a T. I was kind of thinking of putting a drain with a pump on it out this end, but I think I'm just going to do that down at the bottom here. So I can pump the water out if I need to drain the boiler because I don't have a floor drain. I got a fairly high ceiling basement. And no place for water to go if it comes out. <laughs> so <laughs> we needed to do something about that. The uh, pump is going to go here for the, you know, for the heating system. And the returns will have zone valves in them. So I guess I got to start putting this stuff together with some tape and sealer. And hopefully it will all go. Once this part is done, it'll be fairly easy to do the rest. The only other pipe matching part will be the boiler bypass. It'll come off of that T in the top in the supply and come down to, as we said before, this, this T right here. That'll have a valve and at least one, possibly two unions in it. So... If we can get that bit done today, we can probably start running the uh, supply and return over to near the heat exchanger. That should be pretty easy. Then do the pecs to it, done. Well, here we are back plumbing the, the barometric boiler in and um, this here crossover section in the back here actually went pretty well. We'll know for sure when we get full of water and see how many leaks we got. Hopefully none. Some guys on the NEPA crossroads are trying to explain why this is a good idea to do it this way. I don't know if they did such a great typing job of explaining it, so I'll try to explain it a little bit. If you come out full size, which in this case is one and a half inch from the back of the boiler, that allows you the most amount of water to get out because the more you reduce that and bush it down, the more water is going to actually stay. Your water line that you can't get rid of is going to go higher. So if you leave it full size all the way out to a valve, you know, a full port valve like this one, you can actually get all the water, well, more of the water than you would otherwise. And as you can see, for cleaning purposes, you open that valve, you can get all the way into the front of the boiler. If you got something in there, gunk or something, or rust that you got to clean out, it allows you to do that. We've got this on both sides here. We didn't see anything in there when I looked. Hopefully there's nothing in there now, because... Should be nice and clean for all the cleaning we did on it. So these will get uh, basically a bushing and a boiler drain on them just to seal them up. But if you ever got to clean it out, you just pull those off and you can get right in there. Got the 
boiler pet bypass thing here. It's the next thing to try to mock up. So that's got to make it to the, uh, to the supply over there. As you can see, I'm a little bit short right now. Maybe I'll put a union on top or something. It's got to have a union or two anyway. So you can actually connect it. And right there is where if I'm going to do a pump into the bottom of the boiler, i got to put a pump right there. And then the return is going to go up and over next to the supply and turn into PEX to get into the heat exchanger and the PEX snake up there. So we're still a ways away from that. Well, that's about it for today's plumbing progress. We did get the boiler bypass done. It's not exactly the way I wanted it, but it will work. I don't like the fact that it rakes up in the back a little bit, but it should still work. Problem is, when using threaded pipe and a union, you have to have exact lengths to actually mate them up when you're done where they meet. So this terminates down in the cross pipe in the bottom right now. And then there's a T, because I didn't have a 90. And I have 190. And a 12 inch nipple with a union, ball valve, another 12 inch nipple looks like, and another T, and another short nipple, and a reducer to one and a quarter inch. Toyed around with the supply a little bit, that's pretty much what that's going to look like. Kind of abandon the idea of the pump in the return. I'm going to do a pump away system, so I'm thinking that's right about where the pump will go, right off of the uh, air scoop. The expansion tank will hang down from that, and that's where we'll tap in with the water supply too for the boiler fill. The return will come back around. Not 100% sure I'm going to do that yet, but it'll probably have to go back the other way. But that's about as far as we got today. All the really tough parts are done. Now it's just the, you know, getting it over to the pecs and connecting it in. Not too big of a deal. So, not a bad day's work.